Hello everyone, Foxy Games here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV full story playthrough. Now, I did say we're going to get back into the main story quest today, and I was not lying to you. Um, I will start off by saying I really wasn't feeling that red glamour, so I switched black, uh, bleh, switched black to the black one, yeah sure. Well, it is very black. Um, <clears throat> but that's not the big thing I want to talk about right now. Remember in the last episode where I said that I would try out housing? Well, I did. Now, this isn't anything super fancy or crazy or anything like that, but I feel like it's a decent start. Um, I mostly just wanted a place to put some of the furniture stuff that I had gotten throughout my travels, like the Four Lords picture, the, uh, the Hildebrand portrait, the Yugiri and Gosetsu sketch, and this mole symbol. But then I started looking through the market and I saw... Huh. Just... I feel so much better. I feel so much better with him watching over me. Lord Orshifant. Um, oh yeah, and a little, a little table, because Foxy lives alone, you know, she, she doesn't, she doesn't have a, a doting husband yet. The, the, the closest things we had were Grahatia, who's stuck in the Crystal Tower, and Lord Orshifant, who literally fucking sacrificed himself to save her. So... Foxy's a bit afraid to make any uh, to make any connections right now. Uh, we also have this lovely maid servant who just stands around forever. An adorable little Allegan repair node. Um, you can also get your uh, summon bell for your retainer and the aesthetician, and you get your own <clears throat> your own orchestrion, which is playing that absolutely heart melting theme from the end of the Omega raid. <clears throat> which um, I didn't realize was from Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, an old PS1 game. Um, also, I have a bit of an obsession with carbuncles, so I have this uh, in-game time accurate carbuncle clock on my wall. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm a bit congested today. I also have an alpha plush sitting on the desk here, which is absolutely cluttered with junk. Um, well, alpha... The wind-up version follows me around. A map of Eorzea over here. I also have another another adorable little carbuncle thing here, and a slightly less adorable chocobo plush. This thing looks like it was made by like I don't I don't know I I don't want to say anything offensive like slave children <laughs> like in a sweatshop or something I don't fucking know. Um, of course. We can't not have a picture of our dear friends, Hildebrand and Nashu, with whom we've shared so many adventures. This elegant housekeeping node sells the same shit as the maidservant, but I, I like the elegant nodes. Foxy has a nice bath over here, and her bed, also carbuncle themed, with a carbuncle doll standing next to it, and this cute little moogle this um, guitar thing that I got from uh, the Azim Step, I think. I can't fucking remember. But, yeah. Unfortunately, you can't use this bed to sleep like the in-beds to log in and log out, which I thought is a missed opportunity. I did try playing with, like, platforms and stuff to build an upstairs level, and it didn't go well, so I'm gonna mess around with that. And, um, you guys will see the results if I ever do change anything here. I also want to add some screens or doors or something to this part. Because, honestly, who wants an open-air bath? What if you have a f <coughs> Excuse me, what if you have a friend over? What if, what if, you know, you want to take a, sh a bath and your friend is there? And it's awkward and weird. Um, oh yeah, and this stove-slash-oven thing over here. I think it looks kind of nice. The, the, these platforms are a bit weird. I guess they're supposed to be shelves, but who the fuck can reach that? It's not designed for short Mikote, that's for sure, and forget about it if you're a Lollafell. This, um, 
This looks like it's supposed to be, like, a counter with a... I don't know, is this like a wash basin? Um, you can't put much on this thing. And again, these who is reaching these top cupboards? This looks like it's meant for hanging coats, weirdly. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it for right now. But I figured I'd show you guys what I have done with this before we get on with the main story, which is what we're going to go and do right now. Oh, and in case you're wondering where I chose to, uh, to get my apartment, it's in Limsa Liminza. Because who doesn't want a beachside apartment? I live in Florida in real life, at least at the time of the recording. That could very well change at some point, and Wow, look at that statue. That's fancy. You know, I, I really do love that, um... I, I love and hate, I should say, that the housing districts are physically represented. I love it because some of these places are actually open, and they're like event venues and stuff that you can visit. Other people just like it when people visit their homes. That's really pretty. Um... I love it for the immersion. These are actual physical homes that you can visit represented in the game in the game world. I don't like it because that means it's limited. Uh, the slots themselves are limited and that really sucks for people who cannot find a house. But look, look at look at this. This is beautiful. This reminds me of where I live. Except the water's a bit more clear, and there are cute cat girls instead of party girls. Um, yeah, but this <laughs> this Asian-looking house, or uh, Hingashi style, I guess, if you want to use the in-game in lore, um, really doesn't fit the beach aesthetic, but I love it all the same. Just, god, this place is beautiful. You don't see anything this nice in Florida, but... And Foxy's really not dressed for the beach, but ah, <sighs> whatever. We're, we're we're wasting time here. Let's let's get back to the main story already. Let's have a quick chat with our friends. More often than not, it seems opportunity is wont to come knocking when the scions are about. So long as you and yours remain here in Kugane, I'm certain a profitable adventure will present itself. Whatever Asahi is planning, we cannot let him have his way. After all, Lord Hien has done. The Empire cannot be suffered to hinder Doma's restoration. Tataru. It's not every day you make friends with a secret co collective of talking animals after all. Even if Soraban hadn't decided to remain at Recent Temple, I wouldn't have wanted to stay away. Didn't, didn't you already say that somewhere? Hmm. Ah, Foxy, impeccable timing. We have just received a letter from Lord Hian. He writes that the Domans are coordinating their efforts with the Blue Kojin to maintain a constant watch over the Red. By staying on the lookout for signs of crystal hoarding and the like, they mean to nip any summoning attempts in the bud, thereby satisfying the conditions for peace set down by the Ambassador. For the Garlean's part, the Popularis have sent word that a vessel bearing Doman conscripts is soon to arrive in Yangxia. Tut seen that the prisoner exchanges to proceed as planned. Lord Hien requests your presence, and I share his view that you should be on hand at this critical juncture. According to the letter, Yotsuyu's memory has yet to return, so it looks like she'll be living out the rest of her days in Doma. Assuming the ambassador means to honor the agreement, of course. But before we get to that, however, I think it would be wise to assess her condition one last time. If the Domas have missed any chance, any have missed any change in her mental state, however slight, it would be better if Asahi weren't the one to spot it. Agreed. Let us make straight away for the, the uh, straight ways for the Enclave. Then Lord Hien will be waiting. I trust you will cope in our absence, Tataru. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Just be sure to come back safely. Alphino's been keeping a very careful count of his coins lately. 
I doubt he'd. Yeah. I doubt he'd ask for a sip of water without asking the price first. <laughs> oh, you traumatized him. Oh well, that's our Tataru, isn't it? That was the most non-hug ever, but the posing is weird. I am very much in favor of a peace agreement between Doma and the Empire. Loosen that Imperial grip, I say, and let the trade routes breathe f freely. Of course. Well, whatever motivates you, Hancock. It's Doggo, I mean Hakuro. We have spared no effort to increase the guard at every settlement here in Yangsha. The Red Kojin will trouble us no more. On that you have my word. Very good. Lord Heen is expecting you. May I show you in? Absolutely. Hmm, our Imperial guests are not here yet. We know the broad strokes from his letter, but I would hear t the details of our Doman friend's progress from Lord Heen himself. Ever since he drained our coffers by uh, by yeah, ever since he drained our coffers dry buying that sword, Alphano has had his purse strings in a death grip. I can't even buy a cup of tea without him going on about the dangers of frivolous spending. Yeah, Totaro really traumatized him. What can I say? Ah, I see my letter reached you across the Ruby Sea. Thank you for coming so swiftly. Though I wrote at some length on the subject of the forthcoming exchange, there was one other matter I neglected to mention. It concerns Gosetsu. As you may have observed, he returned from his ordeal rather worse for wear, and despite his best efforts to conceal his condition, or perhaps because of them, he recently collapsed. Good gods! Is he alright? Confined to bed and grumbling without cease, but he has shown signs of recovery. He made me promise not to tell you, lest you worry unduly, which was all very well when you weren't here. Now that you are, however, I think at high time he received some visitors. Might you spare him a moment? Yotsuyu has scarce left his side, and I imagine you are curious to see what has become of her as well. We will visit him at once. Foxy, Alice, shall we? cannot feed myself. <sighs> I grow weary of the taste of gruel. You don't like it? Can I fetch you something else? Aye, wine. Or if that is not wholesome enough, I don't know. A sweet persimmon from Namai? I enjoyed them in my youth. A persimmon? Nay, pay me no mind. I am full. Besides, we have guests. I hope we are not interrupting your meal. We had heard you were confined to bed and thought you might welcome some visitors. Confined to... A gross exaggeration. A trifle drained from my exertions, perhaps? But with a little rest, I shall be fighting fit again in no time. That's our Gosetsu. Take off your clothes. Gosetsu, is this how you've been spending your time? My lady, I assure you, this is not... Off with them! We need to wash you. You stink. <laughs> what are all these scars? There are so many of them. Hmm, two of them look oddly familiar, don't they? Almost like he was shot by someone. <laughs> Maybe someone in this very room. Three times.
A life of battle will leave its mark upon a man. Is something wrong to you? It's nothing. I'm fine. But leave me be, woman. I will not be fussed over like some newborn babe. <laughs> there went the voice acting budget. They make a convincing pair, do they not? On first acquaintance, I would think him a doting grandsire and her a model grandchild. Indeed. Had someone told me a year ago that I would live to bear witness to such a scene, I would have declared them mad. That aside, I am relieved to see Gosetsu is none, has lost none of his spirit. But what a turn of events. I mean, for her to suddenly be watching over him. You couldn't make it up. Although I suppose Gosetsu is an old man. But the way he charges through life, it can be easy to forget. Aye, he has resisted decrepitude with the same defiance he showed the enemies of Doma. But no matter how adamant his will, no man can carry on forever. He has pushed himself beyond the limits of endurance too many times. Even if his health returns, the fact remains. He will never again be the warrior he once was. He has given his all for liege and land, and we will ask no more. And what of his nurse? If Yotsu was fe if Yotsu was feigning that, well, she certainly has me fooled. This is no pretense. Who's this? Oh, Yugiri. Yugiri, out of all of us, I would think you the hardest to convince. So, what makes you so sure? I have been spying on Yotsuyu from the shadows, waiting for the misstep that would betray her charade for what it was. But her mask has never slipped. Not once. She has remained in character from the first. One evening I watched, as, I watched her as she sat in her chambers, unguarded and alone. She would taken the dishes from the cupboard and was pretending to prepare dinner right there on the tatami. A child's game. Even the wariest shinobi would not go to such lengths. I can but conclude that her mind is truly broken. Well, that's good enough for me, and everyone else I would hazard. Aye, the matter is settled. Yotsuyu will become Suyu, and begin a new life here in Doma. Before that can happen, however, we will need to present her to the Ambassador one last time to prove that her memory is truly gone. But I would not risk parading her in front of our returning conscripts. Her presence at the exchange would only stir up mutinous thoughts. Understandably, she as good as fastened the chains around their necks. Aye, which is why I mean to conclude this business with Suyu first, out of the sight of my countrymen. Will you help me? We are at your service. There is no higher purpose than the pursuit of peace. My thanks. The Garleans are on their way, and we must prepare the welcome to welcome the ambassador. We will meet you at the docks with Suyu. A very sensitive situation we find ourselves in. Even after weeks of surveillance, it was difficult for me to accept that Yotsuyu's condition was genuine, but not as difficult as uh, difficult as accepting Gosetsu's affection for her. Oof. The skiff will take us to our meeting with the ambassador. We will join you at the docks once preparations have been made. Well, the room's empty otherwise, so let's go outside. Can you imagine Yotsuyu playing with balls on the floor? I don't know that we can think of her as the same person anymore. Eh, not really. Shall we wait here then? Lord Hien should not be long. My friends, have you seen Suyu? She is nowhere to be found. Oh dear. What? But the Garleans will be landing in a matter of moments. If she's fled, 
Could it mean her memories have returned? I know not. Yugiri is scouring the streets as we speak, but it is possible Suyu has left the Enclave altogether. Captain, a word. Did you perchance carry a fair-skinned woman across the river? A fair-skinned woman, my lord? I, I do not rightly know. I think... Yes, yes, my lord. Now that you mention it, there was a lady among the passengers whom I do not recall having seen before. Her face was hidden by the brim of her hat, but I remember taking her hand to help her onto the boat. White as new-fallen snow it was. Was she someone important, my lord? Have I done something wrong? Wrong? No. No, I was merely hoping to catch our guest before she departed. Be at ease, Captain. It would seem that Suyu crossed the river. Kami, help me. No good can come of this. Oh dear. Um, well, then none of this is any good. For me, anyway. We will hold on to it. Um, you, maybe you'll understand why later. Maybe. Her memory must have returned. Why else would she run? Without Suyu, I cannot see how the prisoner exchange, or indeed the peace process at large, can proceed. We have to find her, and soon. It seems Suyu has gone unrecognized thus far, but Kami help us if someone catches a clear view of her face. I must find her before that happens. The responsibility for her disappearance, all of this, lies with me. But I would ask for your aid nonetheless. We are at your service, Lord Hian, now as before. Let us make the crossing and begin our search. You, you go on ahead. Someone should let you, Geary, know that what we've learned. I'll join you on the other side. We have no way of knowing where Suyu is headed, so we had best divide our forces. I will take Kusakari and its surrounds. Alfino, if you would take the road to Castrum Fluminus. Foxy? Forgive me, but could I ask you to interrogate the residents of, ya of Yakuza Manor, or of Yazuka Manor? One of the Namazu may have well seen our quarry. If everyone is in agreement, let us board the skiff and hope the Kami smile upon our efforts. Damn it, Suyu. And it was all going so well. That, that has to be, like, the theme of this expansion. And it was all going so well. Yuzuka Manor, which I always keep calling Yakuza Manor, because why wouldn't I? Welcome to Yuzuka Manor, yes, yes. Now, if there's anything you care to know, you need only... Huh? A pale-skinned woman? I have seen no such traveler, I am sorry to say. Mostly so most sorry. Scaly-skinned Namazu, on the other hand, we have in abundance. Yes, unfortunately, I can see that, and likely smell it, too. God, what happened to him? Unusually pale skin? Yes, yes, I saw this woman on the way back from my fishing trip. She had just crossed the shallows east of here, and was headed in a northeasterly direction. For the most part, her steps did not seem certain. If you hurry, you might still catch her. Northeasterly direction... Namai. Let me guess. Telescope. You see no sign of Yotsuyu to the north. Perhaps she is somewhere farther off than north northeast. No? Okay. So happy to be able to fly. And listen to this beautiful, beautiful music. Still no sign of Yotsuyu. Perhaps she is yet farther to the northeast.
Yotsuyu is nowhere to be seen, but lying on the ground a short distance to the north, you spy a familiar looking wide brimmed hat. Uh oh. It wouldn't do for something to happen to her now. A cursory glance is all that is required to confirm your suspicion. It is the same hat Yotsuya was wearing when you found her in Sakazuki. Foxy! Before you ask, our search of er, Kusakari and its surroundings has yielded exactly naught. Save this chance reunion with you, I suppose. Mistress Alice has gone to assist her brother at the Castrum. It was she who informed me of the situation. I just uh, I joined Lord Hien here uh, here shortly after. How did you fare at Yuzuka Manor? Any sign of our missing guest? Towards Namai. By the Kami, if the villagers recognize her, it will not end well. We must hurry. Yugiri and I will check the paddles under the paddies. The village square is yours. Greetings. Might I have one of your... Wait! Please! I only wanted a persimmon! Kami, save us! Her spirit has returned! She's back from the dead to seek her revenge! It can't be. She couldn't have survived. What did I... What, what did I do? As if you don't know! Good people of Namai. Be at ease, I pray you. You have naught to fear. My lord, forgive me, but what is that monster doing here? They told us she was dead. I too was surprised to learn of her survival. More even than you, I would hazard. Twas I who cut her down, I who left her to her fate. But it would seem the Kami had other plans. By some miracle, both she and Gosetsu were spared when the keep collapsed, though Yotsugu's preservation came at the cost of her memory. You're saying she's forgotten? Forgotten everything she's done? Lies! Lies! My lord, she would say anything to escape punishment! What does it matter? We have not forgotten her crimes! And we demand justice! I beg of you, Lord Hien, draw your blade and rid us of this canker! What I saw then, it's all true. I'm sorry! I'm so, so sorry. You're sorry. And what? 
we're supposed to forgive you. Here, there's no need to cry. Can't you see how scared she is? How can you be scared of her? She's not the same. Until such time as her memories return, this woman shall be known as Tsuyu and treated as a citizen of Doma. I will, however, see that she is watched at all times. Rest assured that there will be no more unannounced visits to the village. As your lord, I ask that you leave her fate in my hands and suffer her to live for now. Please, Issei. All right. I'll keep my peace. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Good kid. Both of you. Crisis averted. I don't know why everyone is so angry, but I got the fruit Gosetsu wanted. I hope he likes it. All this over a persimmon. I failed to consider how she might endanger herself. Knowing she has the mind of a child, I should have continued my vigilance, not relaxed it. Let's talk to these two before we go. I'm not scared of her. Not anymore. Well, that's good. I can't forget what that woman did to us, but I won't do anything to upset Azami. That's the best way to do it. Nothing else to do right now. Ugh, that would have been better avoided, but at least it did not end in bloodshed. And judging by Suyu's reaction, she remains oblivious to the events of her former life. This was no escape attempt. Nay, it seems, she, it, it, seems it was an offhand request of Gosetsu's which brought her to Namai. She came in search of a persimmon. Ha! <laughs> and they say fruit is good for the health. I do hope Gosetsu finds the taste to his liking. Well, we have certainly taken a long way around, but let us continue on to Castrum Fluminus and our meeting with the Ambassador. Alphano and Alice should still be there, conducting their search. I could always tell them by Link Pearl that they can stop searching, but, you know... Do, do we forget that there are Link Pearls until it's convenient to the plot? The Imperial airship has arrived. Whether our conscripts are aboard remains to be seen. I was sure Yotsuyu had fled, but it seems her memory hasn't returned enough after all. How foolish of me not to consider Gosetsu's craving for seasonal fruit. Lord Hien informed us of the uproar at Namai. Thank the twelve you found Yotsuyu when you did. I dare not think what might have happened had you not. Do we have to stay here long? He'll be waiting for his fruit. It seems our Imperial guests have already arrived. It is time to meet with the Ambassador. Ugh, must we? He was so pleasant until the end of our last meeting.
What a pleasure it is to see you once more, Lord Hien. Not to mention my dear sister. A pleasure to see you too, Ambassador. Forgive us our late arrival. You have our people aboard the airship? Exactly as agreed. We would leave you in no doubt as to the purity of our intentions. I dare say it was the self-same spirit of cooperation which prompted you to bring Yotsuyu here today. Indeed. Before excluding her from the exchange, I thought it only fair that you see her condition for yourself. Physically, she is in fine health, but her mind is unchanged. So I see. But all need not necessarily be lost. In anticipation of this tragic turn of events, I took the liberty of inviting some special guests. Ah, Yotsuyu. You look... well. <laughs> of all the people... Is something wrong, dear sister? These are our beloved parents. Does not the sight of them bring back sweet childhood memories? Seem my little surprise was not sufficient. You needn't glare at me so, Lord Hien. I merely did what any loving son would do for his family. Lest you doubt, I am content to leave the acting viceroy in your care. Pray, treat her as you would any daughter of Dorma. too fond of this place, dear sister. You will come back to us ere long. We continue with the exchange as planned. Very good. The structure across the river should serve our needs. We shall await you there with the conscripts. If you would bring your captives. Agreed. Until then, Ambassador. I knew better than to trust Asahi, but that was a dirty trick. Still, unpleasant as it was, we've at least put the matter of Suyu's future to rest. 
I have sent her back to the Enclave with Yugiri to give Gosetsu his precious persimmon. Come, let us follow them. You have that look, Alpha now. What is it? Oh, nothing of consequence, most like. We can discuss it upon our return. I don't know, Alpha no. Tend to have an eye for things like this. I suppose Suyu is to become an official Domin citizen, but what then? Will they keep her hidden here forever? Or might she one day be allowed to walk amongst her countrymen? So it would seem there will be one few, one less prisoner at the exchange. I only hope Yotsuyu's presence here will not present further problems. We should pay a visit to Gosetsu and reassure him about Suyu's fate. He will want to know that the Empire has finally relinquished its claim on her. Gosetsu, are you awake? My lord, come in, come in. When Tsuyu returned, her eyes were red from weeping. She spoke not a word, simply sat and peeled some fruit she'd brought for me. She then claimed weariness and retired to her chamber. Tell me, what happened to upset her so? The ambassador arranged a surprise reunion with her foster parents. A misguided attempt to restore Yotsuyu to her senses. It was plain their presence caused her great distress, but she seemed otherwise unaffected. Yotsuyu was mistreated as a child, was she not? It was a cruel trick to use her tormentors like that, knowing the pain it could cause. Hmm. I like this Asahi less and less. Be that as it may, he has agreed to allow Yotsuyu to remain with us in Doma. Our primary concern now is to hand over the prisoners without incident, and bring our people safely home. There was one other detail at the meeting which caught my attention. I assume you all noticed the rather suspect crates within the castrum. The Imperials were quick to retrieve them afterwards, but I wonder... Out with it, brother. You fear they might contain bombs or war machines? If the Ambassador wanted me dead, he has had ample opportunity. No, assassination is not his intent, but we should be on our guard for other acts of treachery. My lord! Forgive me, but the Lady yachts to you. She's gone! Gone?! I beg your pardons, my lords. I was certain she'd fallen asleep. No, no, the responsibility is mine. Twas I who gave her a room instead of a cell. She may simply have wandered outside. We will organize search parties. Might I call upon your assistance? Of course. Oh. 
help. Help me. Oh dear. I had it remembered. He should hate me. But I will not suffer his kindness. Not after what I did to him. Who's there? <gasps> oh, it's you. What are you doing out here in the dark? This is the Enclave, is it? When the soldiers dragged us back to Doma, you were the last person I expected to see. You're the bane of our existence, Yotsuyu! A font of misery! You couldn't even do us the simple courtesy of dying, could you? Oh, no! You had to live and taint us with the shame of your failure! We had a perfect life in the capital, and now they're making us wallow in this muddy ruin like common swine! I don't deserve this! <laughs> yeah, you're right. You deserve worse. God, what an awful person you are. Now, now, dear, that'll do. There seems little point in berating the girl when she scarcely remembers her own name. Our time would be better spent contemplating how we're to survive this unhappy predicament. You've kept your looks at least. I suspect you'd fetch a handsome price with the right buyer. Maybe enough to get us to Kugani and start a new business. <laughs> ah, my beloved parents. No sooner do I wake from gentle slumber than the world returns in all its cruelty. Yes, this is how it always was. How it was meant to be. Very well. If I cannot escape my nature, then I shall embrace it. To the very depths I have sunk, my soul steeped in spite and rotten to the core. The self-righteous hide behind justice, but I need no such mask. Father, mother, was it not you who made me into this monster? Who taught me the truth of this miserable world? For years I knew naught but the taste of pain and humiliation. But the time has come to savor my vengeance against Doma. Against all my enemies. And it begins... With you! Yotsuyu! <laughs>
Well done, dear sister. Did I not say you would come back to us? Brother dearest, what a surprise. You always were a cold-blooded little worm. I doubt you thought twice about sending our parents to their deaths. Your dagger yet drips with their blood, and you presume to judge me? To be frank, I didn't think you had the strength to slay them so cleanly. A single thrust each. I'm impressed. But surely you can't be satisfied with murdering a pair of doddering elders. You yearn for a deeper vengeance, and the power to see it through. Any sign of her? What happened here? I knew what would happen if she recovered. And still, I did nothing. You say she left with her brother? Whatever he wants with her, he was willing to pay for it with his parents' lives. But this is neither the time nor the place. We must gather the others. I don't feel too bad for them, to be honest. Even if Yotsuyu was foisted upon them, they didn't have to make her life miserable. Just another example of how society creates its own monsters and then balks at them when they do something terrible. So Yotsuyu has returned to the bosom of the Empire after all. I cannot say I'm surprised, but what I struggle to fathom is Asahi's aim in all of this. Yotsuyu hid her recovery well. I had no inkling that her memory had returned. I keep asking myself when it could have happened. At the meeting with her parents, perhaps? But then why would she... Nay, there is not to be gained from such conjecture. So Asahi got his way in the end, and at an unspeakable price. He really is a vile little worm, isn't he? Yeah, he's pretty terrible. We've recovered the... the Nayuri's remains, and we'll hold the cremation anon. Ah, <sighs> Whether they had never again set foot in Doma. I broke the news to Gosetsu myself. He was... quiet. I think it best that he be allowed some time alone with his thoughts. Yeah. So, my friends, that which we feared has come to pass. Yotsuyu has regained her memory and returned to the Imperial Fold. It is, by any measure, a cruel twist, not least for Gosetsu, but one which does not invalidate our agreement. According to the terms of the contract, we were bound to surrender Yotsuyu into the Garlean's hands, should her condition improve prior to the hour of the exchange. By that reckoning, all is, if not as it should be, then as it must be. This I can accept. But what I cannot accept are the unconscionable lengths to which Asahi went to achieve this outcome. Given his recent conduct and his apparent admiration for Xenos, it is plain he cannot be trusted. And that is to say nothing of the unexplained containers he insists on bringing to our meetings. Whatever the ambassador is planning, I think it is I think it unlikely our negotiations will end peacefully. In the event of hostilities, the safety of the conscripts must be our first concern. As such, I would have an escape route in place before the meeting begins. 
a wise precaution. If the main structure of Castrum Fluminus is to be the stage for the exchange, I believe a thorough inspection, uh, yeah, thorough inspection is in order. The Citadel has stood empty ever since the Imperial withdrawal. While we took steps to ensure that it could not be defend defended by an occupying force, it is entirely possible that the Ambassador has arranged things there to his advantage. I will slip inside and make certain we have an unobstructed exit. Pray allow me to join you. I have some experience of Imperial facilities, and should matters take a turn for the worse, I would hope to be at least of, be of at least some use. Very good. That should, be, that should be enough to guarantee us a way out of the castrum. Beyond that, however, we need to we will need to ship uh, a ship to ferry the conscripts back to the Enclave. Even with every skiff we have, it would take several trips to evacuate everyone. A confederate Sekibune, on the other hand, would require only a single run, and leave us far less vulnerable on the water. Assuming, of course, Rasho could be convinced to part with one. Might I take the lead on this? I've had dealings with Rasho and his pirates before. And I won't be alone, will I, Foxy? You can count on me. Much appreciated. I quite fancy parlaying with the pirates again. It's just a shame Lise won't be there to reprise her role. Yeah, we have kind of come full circle, haven't we? Hmm. I am certain you would make a persuasive pair. But I think I will accompany you to see these negotiations all these same. Uh, all the same. My lord, the ruler of Doma should not be seen consorting with common brigands. Come now, Yugiri. They stood with us against the Empire. If we would ask their aid once more, we must treat them with them as equals. My presence shall serve to demonstrate our sincerity. Indeed, my lord. Pray forgive my presumption. By your leave, Master Alphano and I shall, shall be about our task. And we should be on our way to Onokoro. Time is short, and Rasho may take some convincing. Alright, let's go uh, talk to the Confederates. Tensui! In my mind, Yotsuyu is deserving of only one fate, memory loss be damned. And if you don't have the stones for it, we would be happy to take on the burden. It'll be over nice and swift. Somehow I doubt that. Now there is a face I did not expect to see. What brings the noble lord of Doma into the company of bilge rats such as we? If you've come to offer Doman chains in place of Garlean ones, then I'm afraid you've wasted a trip. <laughs> and what, sign, well, what fine subjects you would make! With your fleet at our disposal, our restoration efforts would be hastened tenfold. But let us speak seriously. I stand before you not to demand your fealty, but to request your aid once more. Mayhap you are confused. Doma's liberation was but a means to an end. We aided you only to save ourselves. Now we have no, so, no such incentive. We have sworn no oath to you, and will not come running like hounds at their master's whistle. And I would not presume to treat you thus. I've come to petition your cooperation as an ally of equal standing. Equal standing, you say? Seems a bit lopsided to me. Where's the profit for us in all of this? Prophet, must you always think in such short-sighted terms? Have you ever considered of doing the right thing? Have you ever heard of pirate, little miss? You'll find we're simple souls. You pay our tithe, you sail in peace. Deny us our due, and we take it by force. We'll pull you out of the water if we see you drowning, but we are not in the business of doing something for nothing. Calm yourself, Mistress Alice. We did not come here to moralize. We came here to talk, and there is more to be said. 
According to records recovered after the liberation, relatives of your Domenborn brethren were among those conscripted into the Imperial Army. And as you may be aware, we recently negotiated the return of said, of said conscripts. Many, alas, will arrive to find no families waiting for them, no homes to grant them shelter. I would ask that you first offer them a, uh, ask that you offer them a place in the Confederacy. You would not be rescuing strangers, but welcoming brothers and sisters into your ranks. And has not the Confederacy been in need of new recruits? You seem well informed of our affairs, Lord Ian. The losses we suffered at the Garlean's hands are no secret, but since we drove them out of Doma, the Ruby Sea has come alive with traders and travelers. So many vessels to tax, so few pirates to tax them. We could do with some more hands on deck, and doubly so if they're familiar with the inner workings of the Empire. Very well. The Confederacy agrees to your request. You will have your ship. But before that, you must do something for me. The vessel I have in mind was damaged during your battle with the Empire. Though we have mended her, she has yet to be declared seaworthy. She is sound enough down below, but when you load her up with conscripts and the waterline rises, those upper planks had best be free of cracks. Assuming you want your people to stay dry, you will do me the favor of swimming around the hull to check for weaknesses. That is, if Domen Lords are not averse to getting their robes wet. Not this Domen Lord. If we are, if we each inspect a third of the ship, it shall be done. In, it shall be done in a trice. That's the spirit. The ship is moored at Quickscape Pier. Our apprentice shipwright will be on deck to hear your report. Look for a man, look for a lad named Ina uh, Ihanashi. And I thought I had a knack for parlaying with pirates. For the record, my previous attempt was an unmitigated success, and yes, I should have quit while I was ahead. I love Alice. Well, well. I thought the rumors were exaggerated, but the young lord lives up to his reputation. Of getting out there on the front lines, absolutely. So Yotsuyu found her way back to the Imperials, did she? I did warn you about being merciful. Yeah, you did. The Sekibune is moored at the Quickscape Pier. Speak with Ihanashi when you have finished your swim. Well, time to take a dip, apparently. No damage here. How are you doing, Hien? The water is so invigorating. I have not swum on the Ruby Sea since... Ah, but I should be concentrating on the task at hand. Hey, there's nothing saying you can't have fun and work. For once, I'm actually glad Yugiri isn't here. I doubt she would have taken kindly to a pirate inviting Hien to inspect his hull. Yeah, I bet you she would have been mortified at the... Indignity. Hmm, a small crack in one of the planks. Ah, uh, this Ihanashi must be on the boat. I am the shipwright, an apprentice shipwright. Did you find anything that might need attention? The section I inspected seems solid enough. On the port side near the bow, you say? Alright, I'll have a look and see what I can do. My apologies, I seem to have lagged behind. I could float in that gentle sea all day. Otherwise, I am happy to report no visible cracking or holes in my section of the hull. You, you're Lord Hien! The captain sent you to inspect the hull? Kami, have mercy. Forgive us this discourtesy, my lord. Haha, <laughs> tis quite alright. In fact, I've rather enjoyed it. I take it you are of Doma? Yes, my lord. 
The Imperials took my father away after the uprising, and I had nowhere else to turn. The Confederacy became my family. But someone told me they're releasing the conscripts now. Maybe my father will be among them. Not that I can go back. There's no leaving once you've joined. How fares our lady? Is she seaworthy? Captain, we found a small crack on the port side, but I'll have it fixed before you know it. I see you've met the boy. Did he tell you his story? He babbles when he's nervous. Should his father be among the conscripts, as he hopes, I mean to give him the choice to leave this life. If he so chooses, I expect you to see they are provided for. I have heard that those who join the Confederacy forswear all ties with kin and homeland. Is that oath so easily put aside? If I allow it. I see in him the lad I was twenty-five years ago. You say the words, you mean them, but the yearning for home still lingers. My family is long dead, and I know this life is my lot. But he has scarce dipped his toes with us. If there is a life for him in Doma, he should have his chance to live it. Well said. The Empire's conquest has uprooted many and more. Be it in Yangsha or out on the Ruby Sea, we have a duty to ensure that Ihanashi and others like him are free to dwell where they desire. Then the matter is settled. I will make preparations to cast off. Rasho is a good man. A pirate, sure, but a good man. Well, my friends, it seems we have our ship. Let us return to the Enclave. Hakuro. As a former soldier of the Empire, I have been chosen to oversee the handover of, the, of our Imperial prisoners. While I am so occupied, I must ask that you provide steadfast support for Lord Hien. As we will. Let's go on inside. Afano tells me they had little trouble finding a suitable route out of the castrum, but he won't say much more than that. If I didn't know better, I'd think he was hiding something, though I can't imagine what. The castrum was deserted. Quite deserted. It was a simple matter to plot the surest path out, uh, hence our swiftness. What are you up to, Alphano. We found the Castrum's tower unoccupied, and betraying no signs of recent activity. Only shadows and echoes awaited us there. Alphano seemed oddly reluctant to linger, but I saw no I saw not to concern us. Are, are you afraid it's haunted or something? Is that hmm. It seems Yugiri and Alphano completed their tasks before us. They have been waiting. We scouted the structure and determined the swiftest path to safety. In the event of hostilities, we will lead the conscripts outside with all possible haste. From there, the Confederacy has pledged a ship to ferry us across the One River. Now we have but to attend the exchange and pray to the Kami these precautions were unnecessary. Yeah, somehow I don't think that's the case. While we were putting our contingency plans in place, I left Hakuro, uh, Hakuro in charge of organizing transport for the Imperial prisoners. He will see they arrive at the appointed hour, leaving us free to rendezvous with our Confederate allies. Come, they await us on the riverbank not far from the Castrum. Moment of Truth approaches. Oh, come on, we need... we need this win. No matter what Asahi throws at us, we cannot let that monster have his way. Whether we had some hint as to the Ambassador's intentions, had we not prepared for the worst, I should be wary of going through with this at all. The tower rather spoils the view across the river, does it not? I concede we might perhaps have chosen a less ominous place to conduct the exchange. Yeah. Yeah. Big ugly metal tower. 
Do not worry about this ship. It will be where it needs to be, and with Tansui at the helm. My only concern is the safe return of our people. That is what my lord wishes, and that is what shall be done. Your party's assembled then? Aye, and ready for what lies ahead, I trust. Lest there be any confusion, though, the tower across the water is to be the scene of the exchange. That, and whatever else Asahi has planned. But regardless of the ambassador's intentions, we will bring our people home. Yugiri, you are to evacuate the conscripts at the first sign of trouble. Yes, my lord. We, meanwhile, shall cover their escape and lend what support we can. Your ship awaits you at the Castrum's loading docks. She will see you safely home. Then all stand ready to play their part. Come, let us be about it. Conclusion to these negotiations will mark a new beginning for Dorma and the Empire. A first step on the road to peaceful coexistence. Indeed. We are ready to proceed with the exchange when you are. <clears throat> Forgive my curiosity, Ambassador, but is there a purpose to these containers you bring with you? Oh, the supply crates. They are filled with materials we hoped might be of use in Dorma's restoration. I meant to gift them to you at our last meeting, but we had so much else to discuss. How very generous. I confess I had not expected such compassion, welcome though it is. But then I was also surprised by the news that one of our captives had delivered herself into your custody ahead of time. A minor discrepancy I shall overlook in the spirit of the occasion. Are you perhaps referring to me, Lord Here? Well, you wasted no time in putting your old outfit back on. Orphan of the Nayuri, widow of Sashihai. And acting viceroy of Dorma! You and your people are mine to govern! Mine to punish! Well, well. It would seem your shattered mind is mended. As per our agreement with the Ambassador, you are free to return with him to the Empire. Your authority as acting viceroy, however, is no longer recognized here. <sighs> My position is not for you to decide, little lordling. All who resist the rule of the Empire must be purged. Such was the order given to me by Lord Zenos himself. I will reign here in this putrid, pestilent swamp until the last of you has been broken. This land shall know no dawn. I will spew forth darkness and drown all in eternal night. And high above you I shall shine, uncaring, cold and distant as the moon!
What has she done? Oh, gods. This is a summoning. A Dorman citizen has called forth an icon in direct violation of our primary agreement. The negotiations have failed. Abandon the captives and make preparations to withdraw. But Ambassador... Disobey me, Pylos, and you disobey the Emperor. Make preparations to withdraw! Now! As you command. to run a strategic withdrawal spare my pride would you I know this foe is beyond me the field is yours we will withdraw but not without our countrymen I want every soul accounted for every soul my lord strength which flows from that baleful light of yours. But I am become Skuyomi, goddess of the moon and divinity of night. What power can compare to such celestial majesty? I shall plunge all I despise into darkness! And within that black abyss, even your light shall flicker and fail. Come, let us cast the stalks and look upon the fate of Dora. I see a future in which the sun sets on this wretched land. Once and for all! go now to face Sukuyomi. Once Yotsuyu, but no longer. <laughs> <laughs> 